there was there was a a study that was published in the American College of Rheumatology, and uh, I believe it was in uh, 1993 that uh, had the title "Physician Variation and uh, Diagnostic Testing for Low Back Pain: Who Who You See Is What You Get." And um, uh, essentially, the, the study uh, showed that uh, what specialist you saw uh, uh, varied as to what recommendation would be made. So if you saw a neurologist in testing for uh, low back pain, so each, each discipline, if you will, favored the diagnostic testing of their discipline, which makes sense. So if you saw a neurologist, the uh, neurologist would um, uh, order a um, uh, EMG or an electro electromyogram that can assess the integrity of the muscle innervation. Uh, rheumatologists would uh, request uh, uh, serologies or blood tests that can identify autoimmune disorders. And surgeons would request MRIs to evaluate the integrity of vertebral bones and discs. Mm. Um, author, physician Jerome Brutman, in his book, How Doctors Think, reported on this study and specifically about a physician who was commenting on this study. And the physician stated that essentially each approach was a franchise mm -hmm. and that um, insurance companies reimbursed for more invasive procedures in, even if it meant just sticking the patient with the needle. So there's a powerful drive to do invasive procedures. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just a, a reality. And, and um, to me, that's not that different from what we do in dentistry. Um, for one thing, the all-important diagnosis is an implied competence meaning that we're assuming that there is a diagnosis and, um, and that if there's a diagnosis that we're looking at what the alternatives are. Um, and insurance companies will reimburse for, uh, let's say, a three-surface preparation on a tooth, uh, tooth versus uh, a two-surface. We'll pay more for you to remove more uh, tooth structure. In other words, um, you get paid a higher fee for more aggressive treatment mm. than for less aggressive treatment. And a full coverage restoration, like a full coverage crown, gets paid more easily than a three surface indirect procedure or partial veneer restoration, meaning that it's like a crown but it removes less tooth structure. Um, it will, the insurance companies typically will balk or not pay for a procedure like that that's more conservative as easily as a full coverage restoration. So it's similar in dentistry as well. It's just the way the insurance companies um, set things up. And I, I think that when you're incentivizing for more invasive procedures or more uh, aggressive procedures, then that it, it stands to reason that that's the type of intervention that you're going to, to have. So I believe, again, it's important to um, to, to look before you leap. And uh, there's no question that ma many times, oftentimes, these procedures are necessary. And, if you, need, and if, you, if you need to do it, make sure you do it at the highest level of skill that you can, but make sure it's also justified or driven by proper diagnosis and the patient's uh, awareness of the risk and the benefit of doing those procedures.